On first down, the handoff to Marlon Mack. Huge hole, 50 yard line. He's at the 40, still going near sideline. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Marlon Mack. Touchdown, INDY. And again, it's picked up. It's Darius Leonard. Leonard with a second INT, and he's streaking down the near sideline. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. He's going to go. A pick six for the Maniac. Kenny Moore gets to Deshaun Watson. That's a sack for Kenny Moore. Kenny has a pick and now a sack in the game. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What is up, Colts Nation? Welcome back to the Bring the Juice podcast. I'm your co-host, Derek Larger. It's just going to be me today because I got an interesting video for you guys today. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a topic that has been on the minds of a lot of people, uh, especially Colts fans over the last year, if you want to think of it that way. And I feel like we can discuss this in a little bit more detail This may not exactly be a hot take, but it could be when you're looking at it from a futuristic standpoint. But anyway, what we're going to be talking about today is whether or not Darius Leonard has cemented himself as a future Hall of Famer already in his career. Now, again, I just want to reiterate this. I understand that Darius Leonard's only been in the league for two years. I get that. I get it. And obviously... He's got a long way to go because in the position he's at uh, as a linebacker, some of the best linebackers in NFL history have gone on to have really long legacies. And we know that for a lot of people in today's NFL, that just doesn't happen for a lot of people. And Darius Leonard is obviously not as big as some guys are out there. But uh, for in regards to linebackers, but again, we're going to get, we're just going to get into this here. Uh, I have a couple arguments as to why he already has done this. Um, And let me know if this is something you guys want me to do for Quentin Nelson as well. I've been thinking about this as well for Nelson's sake, but obviously I wanted to mention Darius Leonard here because Darius Leonard does not get as much of the uh, help here as someone else does. So I obviously know that he'll need to do it for a long time, like I said, but there are some things that he's done, and here's uh, one reason as you can say that. So, in case you're wondering if anyone truly believes he can be a Hall of Famer outside of our fan base, his own GM believes so, and a couple other guys as well. I mean, Chris Ballard compared uh, Darius Leonard to potentially having a career like a Brian Urlacher, Lance Briggs, or Derek Johnson, guys that Chris Ballard has worked with before and knows a lot about. Uh, Chris Ballard said that, you know, when he was at the Senior Bowl, he reminded me of, you know, Brian in ways and said, this guy's going to be really good. And so far, in Darius Leonard's short career starting out, he is certainly uh, living up to those expectations and beyond. Don't forget, this was also the guy that we continue to mention was rated was ranked the worst draft pick by Bleacher Report in the 2018 draft. Yeah, think about that one for a hot second. So let's kind of get into some other things here. So we looked back at the top 25 players in the NFL under 25 uh, by CBS, and they obviously have uh, they made this. I believe it was back in March when they did this, and Leonard was seventh on this list, and believe it or not, Quentin Nelson was fourth on the li- on the updated list that they did, uh, outside of Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and Deshaun Watson. Quentin Nelson is fourth. That's incredible, nonetheless. But outside of quarterbacks and Quentin Nelson, there are two players ahead of Qu- of Darius Leonard so far, and that is edge rushers Joey Bosa and Miles Garrett. Now, as much as I like Miles Garrett and as much as I like Joey Bosa, I don't believe that both of these guys should have the ability to be ahead of Darius Leonard right now. I don't think they should. I don't believe it because of the simple fact that 
Joey Bosa and Miles Garrett have missed relatively the same time. Relatively the same time. And look, they've been good. They've just not been transcendent and dominant in the way that Darius Leonard has at his position. Miles Garrett a little bit more than Joey Bosa. But then again, Joey Bosa's had a little bit more injury problems. And we obviously know what happened with Miles Garrett at the end of the 2019 season when he got suspended for the last few games. But Darius Leonard to be seventh, even behind a Joey Bosa and a Miles Garrett, Darius Leonard has been a lot more accomplished in his first two seasons than these two guys have. So why is it he's not above them? I don't understand it, but that's a topic for another day. So let's talk about like what it would take to be a Hall of Fame linebacker, right? What is what does every Hall of Fame linebacker have? Uh, let's just kind of generalize it here. Well, first thing you have to have is passion, right? We obviously know some of the greats at any position when it comes to the NFL. You have to have passion. You have to love the game. That is ultimately how you become a Hall of Famer. You have to have aggression. At that position, That that's one of the positions that's taken the most hits. and You, you have to deliver those hits a lot more often. So having that aggression, you, you can't play soft at that position. It's not going to get you anywhere. And having a relentless motor to make a play. We all know Darius Leonard certainly has that. So, and you have to be willing to put your body on the line. Darius Leonard's been doing it ever since he got in the league. And then another thing you have to do, you have to be able to play at every level on the defense. Darius Leonard's shown he can do this as well. He's able to rush the quarterback. We'll get into stats here in a little bit later, guys. So just uh, bear with me here. But we know he's able to rush the quarterback. We've seen him be able to play in coverage and has tremendous quickness. I mean, we've talked a lot about Darius Leonard's arm length and his ability to go side to side, right? That, that, That just pops off when it comes to his game film. So it's really nice to see him doing that. So you have to understand when it comes to all of these You have to understand Darius Leonard has all of these that makes him to be a potential great linebacker for many, many years to come. So now let's kind of look at some of the accomplishments that he's had his first two seasons. Well, Darius Leonard already has a season where he's led the league in tackles and a season where he missed two games or three games, actually. First team all pro selection as a rookie. He was also snubbed from the Pro Bowl that year. So let's not focus on the Pro Bowl for a second. So remind you, led the league in tackles as a rookie. As a rookie. That is very, very, very difficult to do. Very difficult. And when you miss games as well. And it was a first team all pro selection. Him alongside Quentin Nelson. That's the first time in fifty over 50 years that that's happened. That's incredible. And this man was snubbed from a Pro Bowl. Now, I know a lot of people say that using Pro Bowls to acknowledge one's greatness has kind of lost its value, right? We used to we used to glorify Pro Bowls because we put wanted to put the best players in the Pro Bowl to represent the NFL. We just don't really do that anymore. It's just it, the some of the best players get missed. Darius Leonard that season had more tackles and forced just as many turnovers as the two players combined that were selected before him. Think about that. That's incredibly bad. It's a bad look for the NFL to have had a guy like Darius Leonard not be selected for a Pro Bowl. Absolutely bad. And then in his second year, we obviously know he missed three games uh, early in the season due to a concussion. He was a st- he was still top 20 in tackles even after missing all those games. He was second team all pro. Most assume he should have been a first teamer because when you look at the turnovers and everything else, but I, we can kind of understand it just due to the amount of time that he missed. I, I can understand it for a way. But you have to un- also understand with the numbers that he's been putting up, Darius Leonard is the first linebacker to go their first two seasons with at least 100 plus tackles five sacks, and five-plus turnovers each season. 
Darius Leonard is doing this on a consistent basis, over 100 tackles. Um, or Again, I'm going to look at the numbers here in a minute, but you have to understand he is a multi-purpose back. This guy, a linebacker, this guy can do it all. He has every tool in the arsenal to do what is necessary to be a great linebacker. So are you still not convinced? Well, don't worry. I have something here. I have a graphic here. I don't know um, where I got this from. I, I don't know if I remember getting it off Google or off somewhere on Twitter. But it was somebody talking about Darius Leonard needs more respect. Well, let's talk about this here. So we got a graphic here where he is alongside Brian Erlacher and Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis, who most uh, uh, can agree are is probably the best linebacker, if not the best linebacker, the most dominant and most feared linebacker that has ever played the game. Brian Erlacher, uh, talk about a beast and a machine, a guy that went 20 seasons as a linebacker. That's really difficult to do, folks. So, two of the best to ever play at that position. Let's look at the let's look at the stats here, okay? This is through the first two seasons for each of these guys. Okay, so this is going over Ray Lewis's first two seasons, Brian Erlacher's first two seasons, and Darius Leonard's as well. So who led the t- who led their them in tackles? Ray Lewis did. Ray Lewis led uh, all three of these in tackles, but not by much. Der- uh, Ray Lewis had 294 tackles in, in his first two seasons. 251 of those were solo. So that is very, very, very impressive. That 90% of the tackles that he had were were solo tackles. That's incredible. And then Darius Leonard came a close second. He had 284. Just 10 combined less tackles. Now, he did have 182 solo tackles. So you can understand, yeah, he probably didn't make as many solo tackles as the other guys. But that doesn't mean he still wasn't involved in plays when it didn't directly involve him. If anything, that just goes to show you, even when the play wasn't ran towards him, he still made plays near wherever the ball went to. Now, Erlacher had 189 solo tackles in his first two seasons. He had 242 combined tackles. So Darius Leonard beat him by 42 tackles. In his first two seasons. That's 21 tackles combined. That's 21 tackles combined. Now let's move on to sacks. Because you know. Linebackers in today's NFL. I I find it. You know they want you to be able to. Do multi, more multitude of things. Not just stopping the run. Or providing coverage. They want you to be able to get occasional pressure on the quarterback. While Ray Lewis. Only had six and a half sacks. In his first two seasons. He gets trounced by Darius Leonard and Brian Urlacher in this department. Darius Leonard had 12 sacks. I mean, he had nearly double the amount of sacks Ray Lewis had in his first two seasons. Now, Brian Urlacher had 14. That's impressive. So, Brian won that one. Now, let's move to interceptions. These are the numbers right here, folks, that I just don't understand why this doesn't get talked about more. Darius Leonard has just as many interceptions in his first two seasons as these two guys combined. Ray Lewis had two interceptions in his first two seasons. Brian Urlacher had five. Darius Leonard had seven. Seven interceptions already in the NFL in his first two seasons. Now let's talk about forced fumbles and fumble recoveries. Fumble recoveries, Ray Lewis only had one. Ray Lewis only had one fumble recovery. Now, Darius Leonard only had two. And Brian Urlacher had three. Now, let's look at the forced fumbles, shall we? Ray Lewis, one. One forced fumble. The grand hitter that he was really only forced one fumble in his first two seasons. Brian Urlacher, the machine that he was, only forced two fumbles. Guess how many Darius Leonard forced? Six. He had double these guys' amounts in fumbles. So when you look at it, 
in the amount of things he has committed and the amount of turnovers that he has created, when you count interceptions, forced fumbles, and fumble recoveries, he has forced 15 turnovers. 15. Brian Erlacher had 10. And Ray Lewis only had four. Darius Leonard forced more turnovers in his first two seasons than these two guys combined. Think about that for a split second. Now, you want me to blow your minds? Let me let me sh- let me tell you this stat. How many games has have these guys played in their first two seasons? Let's let's take a look. Brian Urlacher played thirty two games. And when you look at that from a numbers standpoint, when you're trying to look at um, numbers and combined tackles per game, Brian Urlacher was averaging around seven and a half tackles a game. It's pretty respectable. I mean, that's pretty good, especially in your first two seasons. That's that's combined tackles by his number of games that he played in. That's around seven and a half tackles a game, closely. So, there's that. And then, it's a little over seven and a half, but again, I'm, I'm doing this off the top of my head. <laughs> so he had 32 games, which means if they didn't, if the Bears didn't make the playoffs, Brian Urlacher was playing every regular season game. Ray Lewis, he had 30 games. And with his 294 tackles, that was just shy of 10 tackles game. Just shy. Guess how many Darius Leonard had, folks? 28. So 14 games a season. 28 games and this man had 284 combined tackles. That's over 10 tackles a game. 10 combined tackles a game. Needless to say, also with the 12 sacks in 28 games. He had more sacks than Ray Lewis and had all these less games. Not to mention seven interceptions, six forced fumbles, and he played two less games than Ray Lewis and four less games than Brian Urlacher. The numbers speak for themselves, guys. And if you want to, if you want to look at these numbers again, just just go back and reread them from what I said here, and then just just kind of gawk at it for yourselves. Darius Leonard is on a pace to be just as good statistically as two of the best linebackers to ever play the game. And yet, this man couldn't even crack top seven or top six in the best players under 25 in the NFL right now. Absolutely incredible that Darius Leonard gets the amount of disrespect that he gets. I don't understand it. Maybe linebacker standards have diff- have gone astray. I mean, outside of edge rusher, and I don't know if you could put corner over linebacker in importance. Honestly, don't know. I mean, obviously having a lockdown corner is insanely important. But, I mean, you got a linebacker that's, that's, that's the core. Right there, that's the middle. That's the the area of the defense where the majority of traffic goes through. Darius Leonard's been dominant. Dominant enough that if he continues on the trajectory that he's at, he is easily going to have a home in Canton, Ohio. And I'm so glad he is an Indianapolis Colt because I would not take it any other way. This man shows up every game. I can't say every game, but when he does... For most of the games, he is showing up and he is giving it his all and he is putting on a show. All right, that's going to do it for this one, guys. I really hope you enjoyed my little rant here. But, I mean, we just have to we have to appreciate this kid because he needs to be our linebacker of the future. Absolutely. I mean, this guy's already maybe the best linebacker in the NFL if you want to put him above Bobby Wagner and a few others but I mean you can't deny with the tackles and the amount of turnovers he's forcing guys appreciate him while he's here 
because certainly we don't want to hope that his career uh, takes an unfortunate turn, but sometimes that can happen, and I really hope it doesn't because this kid is special, and he's going to make this team really good for a long time to come. Thank you guys again so much for listening to this. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, go Colts. We'll be right back.